Welcome back, everyone. Hey, I want to talk about a topic that uh, doesn't get talked about enough, which is that your Mitsubishi Montero is probably burning oil. It's probably burning oil. It's probably, it might be leaking oil, but chances are good that it's burning oil. And if it is burning oil, it's most likely due to these guys right here. These are your valve stem seals. Uh, and you might get that talked about a lot on forums or Facebook groups or people might say, hey, it's your valve stem seals. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how far into the motor valve stem seals are and what they're doing. So there's lots of good videos on it. But basically, this guy right here is a valve, is an intake valve. And it goes into the cylinder head right here. So this is on the block side of the cylinder head. And then this stem goes up through here. And it goes onto here. And it's contacted by a rocker arm that's working off the camshaft. And what ends up happening is this guy right here, this is an old one, they get really hard and brittle and they no longer are supple and they no longer have that kind of retention on this. And this is flying around in your motor at several thousand RPM. So it's going up and down multiple times a second. It's flying around and oil gets past this really crusty seal and it comes down from the head into the combustion chamber and it burns right here in your cylinder. So the head goes right on top of here. It burns in the cylinder, it goes out the exhaust, and that's why you see blue smoke coming out of your tailpipe. That's why it smells bad. So it's these little guys right here that are going bad. Here's a new one. This is a new Felpro one. I like these Felpro ones. Some people say go OEM. Um, I, th I haven't had any issues with these. But these guys, nice and supple, whatever. This is a $10 part. If you add up all of these for this, this whole entire um, engine build, 10 bucks, 20 bucks in O-rings um, and gaskets and that kind of thing that go around here. There's a little rubber spring as well that go on here. But basically the valve stem seals are like 20 bucks. It's the labor to get in here that is a killer. So in order to get in here, you have to disassemble the valve train, pull a valve out, or if you can do it in the in the car, you've got to like figure out how to keep that spring or uh, keep the valve from coming up while you take the spring off and get it on. It is a huge task. So it's worth noting that if your car is burning oil, the solution is probably your valve stem seals. And it's also worth noting that this is not going to be a quick fix. This isn't going to be a thicker oil or Lucas stop leak situation. You have to go in and fix these or you have to be okay with the fact that you're burning oil, which might affect your cats, definitely affects the smell. You wanna be really careful that you don't run it out of oil. That's how I blew up my Gen 2, is I was leaking so much oil through these valve stem seals, I ended up blowing it up and rebuilding it. So, a couple things to keep in mind. If you're doing a head gasket job, go in and do these. If you've already got the block torn down, if you already got the heads off, it's way easier to do this outside the car than it is inside the car. So if you have a shop doing it, make sure that they're they're replacing these, that they're going all the way in and touching these guys up. Make sure to get good gaskets that you can trust. Like I said, I use the Felpro ones. Some people swear by the OEM ones. But there you go. There's your valve stem seals. Your Montero is probably leaking oil from these. In the case of this Montero Sport Motor, this is the 3.0, and it's got um, 24 valves. So I have 24 different spots between the two heads for it to leak oil. So if you don't change these, they, they can definitely blow that blue smoke, run you low on oil, so check those. Okay, I got the new valve stem seals on. Uh, really easy when you pull them off, you pull them off with a pair of pliers, just wiggle it back and forth, pop them off. It takes a little bit of struggle, but you can get it. Then you just slide these guys on, and I find that a 10 millimeter socket um, on an extension is perfect for getting in there and just very lightly pushing down and making sure that they get on there. They kind of bottom out. You don't want to hit these with a hammer because what ends up happening is you actually push them past and you break through that rubber seal, uh, which I mistakenly called an O-ring earlier. But that's not what you want to do, obviously. You just put these things in. You don't want to leak. So I just tap them a little bit with my hand, make sure they're good in there, make sure they're flush, and those should be ready to go. Now, I mentioned earlier this is way easier to do with the head off the car. You can do this with the head in the car. Some of the guys that are like better at this stuff, they, they do that. For me, it's almost not worth it. By the time you get all the way in here, just pull the head. Um, that's how I feel at least. It's a huge pain in the butt to be working in the car with like, things that are crammed back here, especially with this guy. This would be all the way back against the firewall uh, next to the brake booster and all that stuff. It's like way crammed in there. And so to get the tools down to do this well is really tough. So I'm gonna share with you guys a trick. Now that I have it off, 
of what I do to get these valve stems, um, these valves and valve springs reconnected in here. Like I said, way easier to do with it off. And that's because of this trick I'm about to show you. So I actually use this tool and uh, I just got it on Amazon. So I'll show you the box here, but that's, well, I don't know if that tells you a whole lot, but the EWK, it looks like this. It's a valve stem spring retainer uh, remover. And it's got two different things. This allows you to pop these guys off. So you actually put this on the top of the valve spring, hit it with a hammer, and it presses it down and it ejects the keepers into here, holds them. This one's been obviously very well used. I've done quite a few jobs with this one. Get those little keepers. But then it also has an install tool that you're supposed to use where you, you press on it and you, you push it in um, again with the kind of lock these two things together like this. You line it up and push it in. I have not got that to work for me well. So I'm going to do it a little different. I'll set the camera up here and show you guys how I managed to get these assembled back together. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tilt the head up. I'm going to get access to the back side here. I'm going to go ahead and thread. Actually, I'm going to lube this up first. When you put in new valve stem seals, you got to make sure that you lube this up. That way it doesn't damage your new seal. Go ahead and throw this guy up in there. Then on the top end, I'm going to look, make sure my spring and my top hat are in there. Get your keepers. Line them up so you just, just set them down in this recessed part so that they're flush in there. Okay. Then you're going to take this guy, put it on top. And what you have to do is you have to hold this valve in place. Otherwise, it's going to walk on you and it's going to go down and it's going to be really hard to get this thing to actually compress. So I take a regular DeWalt wood clamp. Um, most people who do DIY stuff have this. Okay, and you set it just gently on the valve that you're trying to compress the spring for. You cinch it down and you line this guy up just like that. Then you're gonna fully compress the spring, being careful that everything's still lined up, making sure that valve isn't walking all the way until the spring bottoms out and then release it. And boom, that valve is in there. The spring is in there. The keepers are in there. That works super well. Now they do make a tool that actually does this, like a big old compression clamp. Um, and if you're a regular, like if you're a shop, you probably have one. If you don't, I recommend getting just a regular clamp and this tool, and I think it'll be a hundred bucks for all of it, but uh, works really well. And that's been consistent for me. So I'm gonna knock out the rest of these and, and get done with this job. So anyways, hope that explains to you guys how far into the motor these valve stem seals are. There's not really an easy fix for them other than just getting in there and doing it. So if you guys have questions or tips on how to do these, post them below. I'm going to get these pulled off with some pliers, throw some new ones in, and continue on in my Montero Sport engine build. We'll see you on the next one.